Hey everyone, uh, sorry I've been away for a while. I've been out doing my job, which is kind of traveling around and giving talks about interesting maths. And now this is kind of my belated follow-up video to, hey, the Barbie typewriter. Uh, I left it a while and I thought, oh, when do I come back with that follow-up video? I decided just to do it. Um, to explain to people who haven't seen me do this before, I've gotten into the habit of doing uh, like follow-up videos to my Singing Banana videos, where I talk about the things I didn't have time to mention in the original video. I get to respond to your comments and your questions. And I also feel like I should make it clear that the intention is that this is unscripted and just live, so I can just talk to you and do this and then stick it up on YouTube and it just makes my life a little bit easier, including all the mistakes and all the ums and ahs. That's just like a bonus. That's added value for you. And the last video I did was uh, the Barbie typewriter video, which was just a little bit of fun. Uh, the idea with the Barbie typewriter then, it was this kid's toy that you would sell, this mechanical typewriter, and it had a secret cipher function in it. Uh, so there was a function you could you know, make secret codes, turn one letter into another, and uh, they didn't mention it. They didn't put it in the instructions. People didn't know it was there until they found it by accident, uh, which is a, kind of a, a funny story. And I, I did it for fun, and let's be honest, I did it because I wanted to uh, promote that online codes course that I, I made. So um, yeah, if you missed it, I've made an online codes course, link in the description. How about that for a plug? And, and then I, instead of just telling you about it, I thought, well, let's, uh, let's do a little funny story at the same time. Uh, yeah, and there wasn't much maths in it. It is quite a simple cipher and I knew that, but um, actually in the comments, we did discover some things to talk about. So I do have some things that are worth discussing about the Barbie. Uh, typewriter. The first thing, and the most important one, I think, was a observation by Rosie Fay in the comments, who said that the uh, cipher here, or at least cipher one, uh, is actually just one big chain of 90 symbols. Uh, just to explain a little bit more then, there are four ciphers that the Barbie machine made, and then there were four decryption ciphers. And it was this, uh, so Rosie Fay noticed it was like one big chain. What do I mean by one big chain? Right, so if you want to write a code or a cipher, uh, one way to do it is two row notation. Let's call it that. And this might be what you call two row notation. So at the top here, you'd have your regular alphabet. All right, I've got A, B, C, D, E. Underneath, I've got my code alphabet. So I'm saying A becomes D, D B becomes A, C becomes E, D becomes B, E becomes C, all right? So that's just one way of writing out how the cipher works. So if you want to send it to someone else, you could write it like this in two-row notation. However, there is another way to write this out, and you look at the chains that the cipher makes. Uh, and to show you what I mean, let's start with the letter A. Why not? If I start with the letter A, it goes to D. D goes to B, and B goes to A, and that takes you back to the beginning again. So there's a kind of a little chain here of three letters. A goes to D, D goes to B, B goes to A. And you can write that out as a chain, it looks like this. So I'm saying A goes to D, D goes to B, B goes back to A. So there's my little chain that I've made, A, D and B. B goes back uh, to show you that the chain has finished they do tend to put that in brackets like that. So that's like a little chain of three letters. And then you can do that for all the other letters as well. So um, if I look at C, C goes to E, E goes back to C, and that is a chain of two letters. And I would write that down. In brackets, C goes to E, and then the bracket is telling me that E is going back to the beginning of the chain, goes back to C. And that's just a more compact way of writing the cipher. Um, absolutely the same thing, right? There is no difference between those two things that I've written down, but that's kind of a more compact way of writing a cipher, and it's a very popular way of uh, writing about and talking about ciphers. Now, what Rosie Fay noticed is that I put up what the ciphers were. I put up the four ciphers, 
uh, in two row notation. And I don't know how Rosie noticed this, but uh, they noticed that cipher one was just one big long chain of 90 symbols, which I've got here. Uh, so it looks like this. This is cipher one written as a big cycle. I've not put the brackets around it this time. Uh, that's because the brackets are part of the symbols in the, in the cipher itself. Uh, but you, you get the idea. That is one long big chain. So what I'm saying here then is M becomes J, J becomes V, V becomes G, G becomes X. So if you want to send a message in this cipher, you can do this. I want to say hi, then H becomes S and I becomes T. There you go. So you can use this and it's one big chain of 90 symbols, which leads me to suspect that the Barbie typewriter here was programmed uh, in cyclic notation. And then the programmer just said, oh, well, I'll just mash the keyboard. It certainly looks like it. So they started off by mashing uh, the alphabet. So that's just the alphabet. The first 26 symbols there, that's just the alphabet getting mashed. Then they mashed a few uh, symbols. Then they went, oh, got to do the capital letters now. And they mashed a few capital letters in there. Some symbols got mixed in. And then they mashed the, the numbers and a few more symbols at the end. That's what it looks like has happened. And I went, oh, that's cipher one. So they made cipher one that way. Then the second thing that Rosie Faye noticed is that cipher two is actually cipher one done twice. What does that mean? So, turns out cipher two, if I do cipher one twice here, that means M becomes J and J becomes V. So if I do it twice, the total result is M becomes V. And then V would become X and X becomes L. You could see it as um, every second letter or every second symbol here. Uh, so they've made a chain with every second symbol, uh, which I guess would make two chains actually it would be a chain of all the symbols in the even places and another chain of all the symbols in the odd places i guess that's what you're going to get and that's cipher two so does cipher one done twice cipher three then maybe not surprising is um cipher one done three times uh, which means m becomes g and g becomes i guess it's l so you're doing every third symbol there which I guess would make three chains. And uh, cipher four is, yeah, it's cipher one done four, done four times, which makes two chains in that, in that case, uh, but it is gonna be like every fourth symbol. So instead of creating four separate ciphers, which I kind of guessed is what they did, they didn't do that. I was wrong. What they've done is they've mashed the keyboard once and made cipher one. And then, I don't know, laziness or just convenience, I guess. They just said cipher two is cipher one twice and so on. I'll tell you a little bit more about how you can write this stuff out. So if you wanted to then, the traditional kind of notation you would use, if I wanted to write a cipher like that is um, sigma. That's just the, the traditional symbol they would use. So if I said cipher one, is sigma, that's small sigma, not the capital sigma that looks like an E. That is um, small sigma. If that's my cipher one, cipher two is me doing sigma twice. Sigma of sigma. So if I put in a letter and if I feed in a letter, like, think of it as feeding in from the right to the left, by the way. So it goes into the right, hits sigma first, so M becomes J, and I know that from my cycle there then j would feed into the next sigma and that was j becomes a v uh, and then v would be the final result we write that as uh, sigma squared so that becomes like a power so it's sigma of sigma it's kind of like a multiplying thing that's just the notation for it kind of different isn't it but the notation is the same uh, which means uh, the cipher three was sigma of sigma of sigma which uh, is sigma cubed. There you go, just written that down. And then uh, cipher four is sigma of sigma of sigma of sigma. Yeah, sigma to the power four like that. There you go. 
Now, what's interesting about that is it does mean that the ciphers commute, the order doesn't matter, uh, which is not true in general, but for the Barbie uh, typewriter, let's say I did cipher two and then cipher four, like that. So I've got cipher two, sigma squared and sigma four. Uh, I did say this is actually working from the right to the left. So it's applying cipher four first and then hitting the result with uh, sigma two. That, however, is equal to, you would get the same result as uh, this, there you go. Uh, sigma two hit by sigma four. Uh, in other words, it's sigma six, because these are written like powers because it works like powers. Uh, there we go, sigma six. So if I choose to do it that way round or the other way round, it doesn't matter, I get the same answer, and that answer is sigma to the power six. In other words, it is the same as doing sigma six times. Uh, so yeah, the, the ciphers commute. I did say that that is not true in general. If you took just two random ciphers, uh, they don't typically commute, so they don't, the order does matter, but because this is using powers, yeah, you could, you could you know, swap the order of the uh, ciphers around, which I guess is kind of nice. I don't know if they did that intentionally, but I guess that kind of makes it nice for a kid's toy, so they don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Another thing that's worth pointing out then is um, what about if I did sigma 90 times? Right, so you're getting the idea now. So if I did sigma, that's sigma. If I did sigma twice, uh, it's kind of skipping a step. If I do it three times, it's skipping and skipping. If I do it sigma 90 times, because there's 90 symbols in there, M is gonna go all the way around to M. J will go all the way back to J. You're gonna get back to plain English. It's gonna be nothing. Uh, so we actually write that as sigma to the power 90. And that is going to be equal to, we call it one, which is like multiplying by one. Takes you back to normal, right? So we call it one because it's like multiplying by one. Sigma to the 90 is one. That does mean we can say some things about the decryption ciphers as well. So cipher five, six, seven, and eight decrypt one, two, three, and four on the Barbie typewriter. That means cipher five is actually uh, sigma to the power 89. So that is cipher five, because then that will decrypt sigma. So if I do sigma 89 times sigma, I get sigma 90, which means one, which means decoded. And that means uh, cipher six is sigma 88, cipher seven on there, is sigma 87 and uh, cipher 8 on there is sigma 86. There you go, I've just written them out. Uh, and some people did say in the comments, and it is a nice observation, I described it as four ciphers and their decryption ciphers. You could just say these are eight ciphers because you could use the decryption ciphers as ciphers as well. Um, but they are, they are eight ciphers that come in pairs, the four pairs, because they're decrypting each other in that way. Like I said, that's actually quite a nice observation. That I said it was Rosie Fay who said that. Um, it wasn't just Rosie Fay though. I did have someone else uh, notice that. Uh, that was uh, Harrison Knox. Um, I just yeah, sorry about it. Equally well observed. It's just that like Rosie Fay said it first, <laughs> so she's getting more of the credit for it. Um, but no, yeah, really interesting thing to notice. And I don't know how they noticed that because I didn't notice that and I wouldn't notice that from two row notation, which is where, which is what I had, two row notation. Uh, I just thought they had two row notation and they mashed that, uh, the second line. Uh, but it's very unlikely you would get one big cycle out of that. So it must have been in cyclic notation when they mashed the keyboard. Yes, I wouldn't have noticed that without actually writing it in cyclic notation. Other th interesting things that people noticed. Well, as some people did point out uh, that the speak and spell. Now, I never had a speak and spell. That was like a, a kid's toy as well. And that had 
a code button. Uh, so who pointed that out to me? Uh, uh, Blue Isla Gill and um, Mike Holzer. They pointed that out. Like I said, I never had one, so I didn't know this. Uh, so I looked it up. I went and Googled it. So you had a cipher button. You would type something in to the speak and spell, press the cipher button, turned it into a code. If you type the code in and press the cipher button, it would decode things for you, which means that cipher button codes and decodes. In other words, it is self-inverse, um, which is what the Enigma machine did as well, by the way. Enigma, you know, famous Enigma, um, would code and decode. If you do the code twice, you get back to where you started, right? It decodes for you. And uh, one way to do that, so imagine this is how they did it, is that they've just turned the 26 letters of the alphabet into 13 pairs. So you, you, you can say, um, you know, well, we can we can do it in our cyclic notation. You know, A becomes M and B becomes T and I'm making this up. C becomes F and something like that. So you make 13 pairs like that of letters. So A becomes M and M becomes A. Right. So they, they swap over in a pair. Looks like that in, in this cyclic notation be 13 uh, pairs like that. And that will code and decode for you if you do it twice. So doing it twice, yeah, get back to where you started. Um, I, I think I think that, that was all I had in my notes. Um, I was going to tell you a little bit more of the story of how I came across this. So I heard about this story about five years ago, and that was from the Crypto Museum website. So the Crypto Museum, really great website, by the way, and it's all about uh, cipher machines. So Enigma's on there and all those World War II kind of cipher machines are on there. It's a really good website. And for fun, they've got things like the, the Barbie typewriter. So I noticed that. Uh, who knows why I was looking at the Crypto Museum website, can't imagine. And I saw this, thought that's a great story. I went and bought this. This is, I've been thinking about this for five years. I bought this five years ago. And I only didn't do it five years ago because I discovered my model didn't, um, have the cipher function. And it was really disappointing. The information I had at the time was that all these Barbie uh, models had the cipher function. So as far as I knew it was going to, very disappointed when I discovered it didn't. Now we know that some models don't have that cipher function. And partly why we know that is because I found this and I told people that it didn't actually work. Uh, so it was very disappointing. Then, uh, yeah, I was looking for like a fun cipher video to do, like I said, so I could hang that advert on it. And I dug this out again, thinking, well, I'll just have to talk around it. But I did a bit of a Google and I found Sarah on Just My Typewriter. Uh, and I'm really glad. And Sarah was great. Uh, and thank you again to Sarah for taking part in it, because she, then she had the actual working uh, typewriter that she could play with. And I really love it when two niche subcultures come together. So it was like YouTube typewriter subculture and YouTube maths subculture coming together and doing a collab video like that. Love it. Great. And I do intend to send uh, my Barbie typewriter over to the USA, over to Sarah as my kind of thank you, as I will have no use for it now. Um, I guess that is. I just want to say thank you to everyone who enjoyed it. I know it was just a, a silly and you know fun one. That's the idea. I know some people don't like fun. Not everyone's into fun, uh, but I do like. Uh, oh, I say thank you to people who took it in the spirit that it was intended, and people who were saying, "Wow, it's like a, a Barbie Enigma machine," and uh, you know, oh, I wish I had something like this, or I would have loved a toy like this when I was a kid. Uh, I do have uh, one comment here from Zvibo who said, oh, you know, GCHQ, absolutely furious that their top technological secrets have been revealed. All their Barbie typewriters are now useless. Nice. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing it. At the end of these uh, follow-up videos, I like to say, and I have been planning a new video and it might be something like this and give you a little teaser of it. Um, I've, I've just been away, so I haven't actually planned 
a new video and I will do that. Okay, so I promise to plan a new video and we'll get that done. Uh, I'll be away again though in the near future, so I'll, I'll try and do my best. How about that? All right, that's all for me for now. I'll say thank you very much and take care.